Welcome everyone. Good morning to those who are gathered here in the sanctuary and to all who are joining us online today. We begin this morning with a musical prelude by Scott DeVoe. Thank you, Scott. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Charlottesville. My name is Angela Orbaugh. My pronouns are she and her, and I'm pleased to be leading worship this morning with Reverend Tim Timerson, Reverend Susan Carlson, and Reverend Leah Durland jones and music director Scott DeVoe. The sanctuary was built over 70 years ago on the homeland of the Monacan people. It was once cared for by enslaved people from Africa and their descendants. We honor all who have dwelt here and all in our congregation whose lives have led to this moment of our gathering. I invite us to take a moment to greet others. Those online may unmute and those here in the sanctuary and, this, and usually in the social hall are welcome to greet your neighbors, especially those you may not know. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hi there. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Oh, to see everybody. <laughs> Carol, your cat looks so much like our cat, Blue. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> are are her are is that are that cat's eyes blue? <laughs> I think that was Donna you were talking to. Oh, I thought it said Carol. It, it did say Carol. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I don't know why. I, I oh, wait, Carol's Carol. now she's off. Yeah, she's off. So you were probably right. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, what a beautiful day outside, huh? It is. It's wonderful. It is gorgeous. Really yeah. nice weather. I've All been out in the garden working. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> but no more this week. It's going to be very hot. Yes. <laughs> That's why I did it today. Now, are you? There. There's that kitty cat. 
Your eyes are blue, aren't they? I think. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Wonderful energy in here this morning, everybody. We offer a special welcome to newcomers and invite you to join us for fellowship after the service in the social hall. Feel free to use one of our red coffee mugs. They are for newcomers and UUCville members and friends. You are reminded to offer a warm welcome to anyone with a red mug. Now, due to our preparations from the yard sale, the social hall is a little crowded right now with tables. Uh, there is no live stream right now of the service in the social hall like it usually is, but we are live streaming on Zoom right now. And many thanks to all of the folks that are helping us share worship, both here and online, our greeters, our ushers, our hospitality teams, MJ, who's usually helping in the social hall. Special thanks to our AV tech guru and team led by Rachel Bucklin. <laughs> And now we have greetings from board member Sylvie Simmelhack. Hi, everybody. How are y'all today? So if you don't know me, my name is Sylvie Semmelhack, and I'm really happy to greet you guys this morning as one of the newest members of the board. So I became an official member of UUCville last year, I think, after completing the coming of age program. But I've kind of been involved in this church since I was born, and it's very important to me. Um, you may have seen me speaking on my experiences in coming of age or the Appalachian Service Project or maybe playing the piano a couple times. I also used to work down in the nursery, so I might have been down there. Um, I value this church community so much, and I'm so excited to offer kind of a new perspective as a board member while being in YRUU um, and to learn and participate in the invaluable work we do as a congregation. So I'm really excited. Um, a little about me, sorry. Um, just a little about me outside of UUCville. I'm a senior at Charlottesville High School um, and I sing in the choirs. I swim for CHS and I teach swim lessons for the city. So yeah, I'm super excited to be here and be part of the board and important part of like big decisions and progress moving forward. And yeah, really excited. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sylvie. All right, so we've got some announcements today. We've got several announcements today. We have the UUCville annual yard sale that took place yesterday. Uh, it was a huge success, huge, I say. The numbers are still coming in, but as of right now, we've made over $6,700 and... And it looks like we may exceed last year's total of 8,200. Oh. We have we have so many thanks to so many people that have helped make this yard sale a success all along. Everyone from those who donated to the yard sale, those who have been working diligently for months, accepting donations, pricing donations, picking up donations, everyone who volunteered yesterday, yeah. uh, folks who brought food to feed our volunteers yesterday, uh, those who have just spent countless hours setting up, moving things, helping with publicity, some who made furniture deliveries all day yesterday for about seven hours and so much more. So can we have a huge round of applause for all of the volunteers? It was truly a team effort. And the good news is there's still goodies to buy. So the social hall is full. Some other spaces have items like out in the main hallway and outside as well. So after the service, feel free to take a look at what we still have. And guess what? Everything's half price. So even better, you can get a snack, you can get a drink and you can shop for some really great items.
Now, Charlottesville Pride Festival, that's less than two weeks. Reverend Tim is looking for more volunteers to help set up and staff our table, help take the table down at the end. It'd also be great if we could have a few creative people with ideas to help our table look really nice and snazzy and stand out. Feel free to email Tim at tim at uucharlottesville.org if you can help out with this. UUCville will once again be partnering with Sim Barreras to offer a pre-K tutoring service focused on basic English language skills. Through its years of work with the local Latinx community, Sim Barreras has found that young children growing up in primary Spanish speaking homes can struggle and fall behind when they get to kindergarten. So they've asked UUCville to provide a fun space where children ages three and four can practice speaking English. We will tutor from 10 until 11.30 a.m. on Mondays and Wednesdays, starting on September 16th. If you are interested, also email Reverend Tim at tim at uucharlottesville.org. Sunday, September 8th, this is our annual water communion service and you are all invited to bring water to share. Your water can be from anywhere. So if you went on a fun adventure, you had a trip and you remembered to bring back water, uh, you can bring that. Maybe this water is from a, a sacred or centering place for you. Uh, maybe this water is from your kitchen sink or your garden hose. Please bring your water on September 8th. Also on September 8th, following that water communion service, be sure to join us for our annual UUCville service fair. That will be in the social hall, which will be emptied of all of the yard sale items because we're going to buy them all today. Leaders from our many ministries and programs will be present to tell you all about what's going on in our congregation and all are invited to attend and get connected. Also, get out the vote. As you use, we believe that in a true democracy, every voice should be heard in order to fight voter suppression and support the voting rights for voters of color. We are teaming up with the UUA in a postcard writing campaign. So today, after the service, after you've shopped for yard sale items, you can join Flame and Raven at the picnic bench to write cards. Now, if you can't stay, you're gonna go enjoy some lovely weather. Find Ellie, she's here. She'll be in the social hall as well and she can give you a packet of cards to take home and write. And one more announcement that I have over here. Our food ministry has a special opportunity this week. You can join fellow UUs in the orchard to pick apples for distribution through our food bank. Now the orchard is located in North Garden. We'll meet for a few hours in the morning on Thursday, August 29th. This is a great way to enjoy the outdoors, build community, and feed the hungry. Families are welcome. Contact Elizabeth Breeden uh, for more details for that. Everyone, though, join us for coffee, conversation, and shopping after the service. <laughs> nice. Phew. Man. There's, there's just nothing going on in this congregation, I'll tell you. My goodness. Wow. So, all right, Angela, get to take a drink or something, you know? My gosh. Wow. So, friends, we're going to begin this morning with a call to worship from Carl Seberg. He says, let there be joy in our coming together. Let there be truth heard in the words we speak and in the songs we sing. Let there be help and healing for our despair. Let there be silence for the voice within and beyond us. Let there truly be joy in our coming together. Come, Come. let us let worship, us worship together. together. As Sam and Henry Powell light the flame of our chalice this morning, please join me in saying our unison chalice lighting words. We gather this hour as people of faith with joys and sorrows, gifts and needs. We light this beacon of hope, sign of our quest for truth and meaning in celebration of the life we share together. 
You can also join me in doing the hand motions that we teach our children in religious education. This is where your hand is the matchbook, your finger is the match. We light this chalice to celebrate Unitarian Universalism. This is a church of open minds. This is the church of helping hands. This is the church of loving hearts. Now please rise and body your spirit and join in singing hymn number 1000, Morning Has Come. The video with lyrics will be on the screen. It does start with a solo uh, by Jason Shelton at the beginning, and we will join in after that solo. Morning has come, arise and greet the day. Dance with joy and sing a song of gladness. The light of hope here shines upon each face. guide our journey Well, this is such a special morning, and I want to start by inviting all the children, the youth, all of those that feel particularly young at heart and energized and awake this morning to come forward for our time for all ages. Particularly Reverend Tim, he's going to start the procession. I don't think you're alone. Come on, gather in. <laughs> well, this is a special morning for many reasons, and you're going to hear about some of them. But you might be curious here. There are three chairs up here. And they have signs on them, which some of you may not be able to see. One says, beginnings. 
One says, in between. And the third one says, endings. Now, do you all have any idea what that the signs might be about? Yeah. A story. Yes, a story has a beginning, kind of an in-between middle part and an ending. Any other ideas? You? What? The day. Ah, because we're starting the day. There's the middle of the day. Here's the end. Great ideas. Well, that is true, all those things. But it's also about the celebration that we're having this morning, about the beginning of Leah's sabbatical, about the and the beginning of my sabbatical ministry, and then the in-between time when we're kind of in now, and you'll hear a little bit more about that, and then the ending of Leah's sabbatical as she comes back to us and the ending of my time with you. And you will excuse me as I perhaps get a little emotional here because it's been a really, really good time. <laughs> I really... <laughs> so I'm going to sit in the in-between chair here at the start just to get us started. And I'm wondering if there are any things that are beginning for you all right now. Any things that are happening that are just starting? Angela, the new semester at school. I would imagine some of you are just starting the school. Yes. What? School. Yeah. So new teachers, new classmates, new classrooms. You know some of them. Yes. So some of them new, some of them old friends that you've had for a very long time. So <clears throat> that's one thing. But what about you're just starting back to school and back to a new semester and um, maybe not quite settled. So I would call that kind of the in-between times. And in-between times are like right now, <clears throat> we are still having the summer fun program, right? So there will be more summer fun program right after this time for all ages, after we've had our little celebration here. And people have summer gardens that are still, I hope, growing, although with the drought, Maybe not so much, so, um, but it's not time for the fall gardens yet. And have we started RE classes yet? Not yet. That's coming, hopefully in a couple of weeks. We shall see. And adult faith development, those classes and events have not started back yet. So sometimes there's an in-between time when you're not quite ready to start, all kinds of preparations could be made, but it's not quite there yet. So that's one thing I wanted to talk about. And of course, you heard about the yard sale. That was another thing that we built up and worked on and worked on and all these volunteers that you heard from Angela. So great. And still, we're in the in-between times because you have more chance to buy some more things that are out there that are really beautiful. So, so that is the in-between time, but the beginning and the endings, we kind of have to talk about those today. And um, one of the things that I am overjoyed about is I'm in kind of an in-between time. Officially, yesterday was my last day as sabbatical minister for faith development. What, what, what do you see here? I'm still here. I'm still here. And that's not going to change because I'm going to keep on being here, uh, but just not in that role. And tomorrow, Reverend Leah begins back again to her ministry for faith development. But what do you see over here? 
Here's Reverend Leah. She's back a day early, as we would all suspect that she might. <clears throat> So I want to invite Reverend Leah to come on up here and to sit in the beginning's chair. Now, so glad to see you. So glad to see you, it's, Reverend it Leah. Good to be seen. Oh my goodness! Yes, makes my heart beat a little faster. Does it? Does that happen to you? Just. We missed you so much, but we've been fine. We've done lots of things. So that's part of our celebration of beginnings and endings today. And I just want to ask you, what was the start of your sabbatical like for you? Whatever you want to share with us. What was, what was the beginning like? Gosh, it seems so long ago. It was the end of February when I started my sabbatical. So it was a colder time of year and I was very, very excited, but I was also a little nervous and it was feeling like it was the start of a journey. Have you all been on a journey? You know what it's like when you start on a journey and sometimes you know where you're going on your journey and sometimes you don't exactly know. And for me, it felt both of those ways. It felt both of those ways. In fact, I, I think a good way for me to think about it is you may remember that Carol McIver, as part of our church staff, made this um, airplane for me to represent the journey that I was going to be going on. And so I've had this on my altar at home to remind me of this journey. The, the plane even has my name on it, <laughs> personalized plane. And then also I had to pack up my bag. Like my bag, not only of the things I needed to take with me that were physical things on this journey I was going on, but, you know, the things of, of um, that I carried in my heart. And one of the things that happened to me at the beginning is I had a lot of dreams, like dreams when you go to sleep, that were about this church. I dreamt about this church and I dreamt about all of you a lot, these different stories that were happening in my head. So that was really fascinating to be dreaming and dreaming and dreaming about all of you. So it was a lot of different feelings, excited, a little nervous, and wondering where this journey was going to take me. Well, that's so awesome. So cool to hear all those things and to also see some visual things about what your journey was like. Um, almost, always so much better when you can see something. Oh, well, well let me show you one more thing. Rachel, yes. there's a photo that I wanted to share with you all. At the beginning of my sabbatical, I took my family on a trip and we went to Costa Rica together for two weeks. So that was a really important beginning of my sabbatical was time with my family and time away in a place that none of us had ever been before doing new things together, like zip lining, which I will never do again. <laughs> Once is enough. Once, Once is, enough. is enough. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's switch places so I can talk about the beginning of my journey. We'll do a little shuffling here. It's kind of so like I'm moving chairs. into the in you're moving into the in between because you're not quite there. But I want to talk about the beginning of my time as the sabbatical minister for faith development. And um, it was a time that was a little nervous. I was a little nervous, a little worried. Do you know the size shoes that I had to try to fill, knowing that I could never fill those shoes? I mean, that worried me a little bit. And then I didn't know many of your names, you know? So I wanted to meet you and know you by name and know some things about you. And I can say that honestly, in this last six months, I've had experiences with you. We've had fun together. We've learned and grown. And I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit too. So it's really been a wonderful journey. And then there's also the 
RE committee that was working with me and just want to give a shout out to them. They are so busy and yet they took the time to be with me and to give me advice and counsel and blessings really. So we work together. And the why are you you advisors? Um, oh my goodness, did we do some good stuff together? <laughs> we really worked hard. And I think you'll hear more about that a little bit later. And then all the parents, so many of you, I tried to reach out to everybody that I had your email address for to send you emails to let you know what was happening and just to, um, to keep you informed and give you little nudges when you could register your child. How many people have gotten little nudges from me here? <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot more of them too. <laughs> so um, so we have right now, because I just got two more, we have 54 people registered for the RE program. And so that is just, so there's still more room, but um, it's really a cool thing. And we still could use some teachers, which I'm sure Reverend Leah will be working on. So that is is part of the beginning, but I wanted to show you some things also. Um, maybe some of you remember this little thing, and it's really hard to see. I don't know if you could even get in here, but this is a jewel. Do you remember when we used this? Anybody remember? Yeah. Okay, that's great. How about you, Niels? Ah, yeah, well, that's part of it. it. It was for our service when it was on Indra's net. And remember, we had a great big net, Reverend Tim and I did, and then we invited everybody to put themselves in Indra's net to show how connected we are. Um, and so this is my little jewel that I will always keep with me. I got so many things, so many memories that I did take with me. Now, anybody recognize this? Yes? Yes, can I hand you this? So, so this is a chrysalis that we made out of a toilet paper roll. I just love that, recycling to the max. And it has a little stick. And when the butterfly emerges, then its wings come out and it can fly. So we all made one of these. And the wonderful thing that I have found about this is that my two cats love this. <laughs> they try to get that chrysalis out, that butterfly out, and they are just fascinated with it. They'll roll it down the hall. And so it stays with me, and it stays in my living room all the time. So I always think about you. Ah, oh, and this one, so precious. I'm sorry, Reverend Leah. Ha <laughs> ha! Anybody know? Yes, I hear that. We had rubber ducky races. We had rubber ducky races for the first time um, through uh, on Easter. And uh, one of our youth had built a funnel, a three-tiered thing, so that we could run three rubber duckies at the same time and pour <laughs> water down them into the kiddie pool. And we did that again with water play. You remember it, huh? Yeah. So this is my little rubber ducky. I don't think it ran, it won because it was the only one. But it's with me. And finally, so many things. Finally is this rock. Beth knows what this is. So we 
I was asked to do a blessing as the youth left for their service trip, to their Appalachian service project. And so the rock was a part of it, along with some water, and everybody got a rock to remember how connected we are always. And this reminds me how we are all connected always. It doesn't matter where we are, if we go on a trip, if we go on a sabbatical, if we move even, move away, we are still connected. We are always connected, just like Indra's net. And so this is something that tells me about that. So that's my part of my remembrings. And I wonder, Reverend Leah, what this ending just right you're moving from yeah, I'm gonna the, move from the in-between back, back to the back to the, the ending. Yeah. So the ending has been a really interesting time. You know, I um I think my psyche knew when I started out this the the time frame of being away. You know, what there was the beginning, there was the middle, and then there was this turning when I felt like I was coming back, and it was a period of time in which I was headed back to you, coming back to you. And I've been thinking about what it feels like to be arriving, to be here with you all now. And I was trying to think of how I might describe it to someone. And um, I, I gave Rachel another image to show you, and it might be one that you can relate to, where you kind of have an off switch. So I feel like when I was on my sabbatical, I got to do the off switch for a while. I got to take some responsibilities off of my shoulders and have that period of pause or rest, which actually was a reset. And so for me, as I return to you, I feel like my reset button has been hit. And what that also helps me think about is, you know how if you're outside and you're playing really hard or you're working in the garden or maybe you're a, a runner and you're running, running, running and you don't even realize how tired you get? Maybe even how thirsty you get? And so I put my water bottle in the Wonder Box because my sabbatical was like taking a long, cool, refreshing drink that I didn't even know I needed. And when I had that drink, it was, ah, I needed that. And I feel so refreshed. And so I am so grateful. My heart is so full of gratitude for the gift of time that you all gave me so that I could push my off button, hit my reset button, take a nice, long, cool drink out of my water bottle that has one of my favorite stickers on it, which Reverend Tim and Reverend Susan know is a Mr. Rogers quote. I like you just the way you are. A good thing to remember every time I take that long, cool drink. So that's how I'm feeling, Reverend Susan, as I come to this ending and then move back to the beginnings chair because I'm beginning again with you. And I'm so glad you are. Um, one of the things that, that I thought about was how wonderful this sabbatical ministry has been for me. And part of it is because of each of you and how you've welcomed me and helped me remember your names and sometimes given me little tests to see like you'd give me your wrong name when I asked for your name, and I knew it was the wrong name, but you wanted to see what I would do with that, and I, I think we worked through that. And uh, so, so that was one of the things. But, and all the other people that I named, and I haven't mentioned, I haven't mentioned the staff, and all the staff, and Reverend Tim. Or Caroline, um, for that matter, could not have done this without Caroline. But 
You, Reverend Tim, made this joyful, fun, collaborative, creative, just all this energy that we brought together out of, well, I won't say nothing because it came out of our hearts, I think. Um, but it's just been such a delight to work with you and to get to know you better and to, uh, to be a friend and a colleague and just, that's been great. But I also couldn't have done it without all the hard work that you put in to me beginning and to you leaving. Um, you just did enormous amounts of work and some of the things we had to reroute and change around, but um, it couldn't have happened without all that forward, forward thinking on your part. So I'm very grateful. And so the ending for me, I've been thinking about what um, Reverend Tim says, well, you will go back to being a civilian, an <laughs> ordained civilian, but a civilian. And I, I thought about that, and that's meaningful to me, because any of us in the ministry, we know what it's like when you retire or you take another position or you transition and you're in and between stages you don't exactly know when you might be called to do something i didn't think about i didn't even know about this position so um so i'm i'm very grateful for all the energy and all the love but i'm sad too i i'm sad and i have to admit that that even though I will still be in this congregation, I'm still a member of this congregation, but I won't be with you in the same way because you have Reverend Leah back. And there's a part that um, you hold in my heart that just won't go away. You know, I'll still be teaching classes and doing adult faith development, doing those things as a civilian, um, but uh, it won't be the same. As, as it wasn't the same when you went on sabbatical and you had to hit that on, off, reset <laughs> button. So I have to do the same thing. I have plans, I have trips, I have hopes and dreams, but don't exactly know. So I'm kind of in the same place that you were at the beginning. And the one thing that I do know, do you all remember this? Does that look a little familiar? What do you think that was? Do you remember? Reverend Leah gave one to each of us right before she left to show us how we were all connected. And I still have mine. It's buried somewhere, but <laughs> I still have it. And there are just lots of them in this wonder box. I kept them there this whole time. Yeah. <laughs> So if you need refreshers, there are more in here. So you all, all of you, will be in my heart, in my heart, I only have one, I think, <laughs> <clears throat> and my memory. But there, there may be all kinds of um, little um, chambers in my heart. So there may be all different kinds of places that you occupy. And <clears throat> certainly, we've known each other for a long time. Scott and I have known each other for a long time since I first came to this congregation. And you will stay in my heart. And so I have a few things for you. Um, one thing is this heart rattle that I got from my spiritual director and from a, a UU minister and colleague. And I wanted to give that to you because it feels like, as I was thinking about, well, what can I give her? It feels like that is something I want to give her my heart, a part of my heart. And this is a little button. And it says, is it true? Is it kind? And will it help? And these buttons were... Um, given to me by a colleague that many of you have heard about, Reverend Dr. Hope Johnson, who has now died, but 
she lives on in these buttons. So I want to give you a few of those um, just to carry on in our, our collegial relationship and our friendship. And, <clears throat> well, I have to give you back your keys. Because <laughs> you gave me the keys when we started, and so they go back in here. And finally, I got this out of my garden. Do you know what that is? No. Anybody know? Passion fruit. And so here it is. You can take this back and take up all the passion that you have for your ministry in a renewed and a loving sense. And there's some other things in here too, but these are just things I wanted to give you because I love you, you so much oh, and I'm so, so grateful. Oh, thank you, Susan. Ah, and so that's the end of this part of our time. And now I'm gonna hand it back over to Reverend Tim. If he can get up, yeah. <laughs> He's gotten a little creakier in the last six months. I, we've tried him a little more. That has nothing to do with you, Reverend Susan. No, no, no question about that. So before we sing the kids out, I wanted to present each of you with a little something. So Reverend Leah, I already vased up these flowers. We gave, you presented Reverend Susan with flowers when uh, she came on board. So we are giving you flowers and they look lovely on your desk. And Reverend Susan, this is a gift for you. A little birdie told me that uh, this was something that you might find to be special. So. May I open it? You may, please. I don't know if I could not. <laughs> what do you all think it is? If they can guess, I'll be very Anybody impressed. Anybody got an idea? <laughs> what? No, it's not a jug of wine. She, Reverend Susan might need a glass of wine after, the, after this video, but, uh, but yeah. So oh, wow. this is a, so a little birdie told me that Reverend Susan was admiring this um, statue of St. Francis of Assisi that was part of the yard sale. And um, so, uh, and that she was talking about, boy, I really love to take that home. So a little bir birdie named Carol McIver told me that. So we I was going to say, yeah, I know it. who that birdie was. Yes. And so Reverend Susan, there is St. Francis. Well, and St. Francis has always been very special to me. I went to Assisi one time, and I got to go on a pilgrimage. And so mm -hmm. that's a really spiritual thing for me because of his love for all nature and the mm -hmm. environment and animals and all kinds of things. So this was just so beautiful. And I thank, I thank you all so much for that because it's lovely. You're so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> very nice, thank very you. nice. So, yes. <laughs> and could we invite um, Bev Ryan and Beth Jager Landis to come up just to say a few words of appreciation? And, if they can get through, yes. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to say just a few words. And as vice president, I am just honored to be able to speak to all of you and to you, Reverend Susan, for all that you have done while Leah's been gone. Um, what a gift you gave us truly a gift and with your kindness hard work and dedication to our congregation and I might add your stellar acting ability <laughs> in our services yes your work with our children and youth has not gone gone unnoticed <laughs> yes <laughs> the, the wig <laughs> your contributions during Leah's sabbatical have made a significant impact <laughs> And you embody love in action. Thank you so much. We are so lucky to have you. you. 
So Rev Susan mentioned a little bit about how she jumped in and really helped the YRUU advisors. And I'm one of the YRUU advisors and I'm speaking on behalf of my colleagues last year that she not only jumped in, but she worked overtime with us. She met us in the evenings on Zoom. And then um, it became pretty obvious that I needed a lot of help planning the Appalachian Service Project for the YRUU. And she had never done that before. And it's a big endeavor. You know, we took um, 12 of our youth um, with us and we wanted to have three groups, which meant we needed six adults. And um, I was pretty sure we had six adults. And then every time we met, an adult backed out. And um, the kids actually didn't back out. They stayed true. But um, it was pretty nerve wracking. And it takes a lot of money to go on this trip. And so um, Rev Susan met with me um, after my work was done. And I'm, I work pretty late hours. So I know you were working overtime. <laughs> and um, we planned pizza Sundays and soup Sundays. And we made a lot of money so that um, we could convince uh, an adult to go and pay for her to go, which was really nice. And, um, and we also paid for gas and some food because Sylvie will say the food was awful at, um, at ASP. So we went out to dinner a couple times. And um, yeah, and not only that, but Rev Susan was just such a, an incredible support um, to me and to um, the advisors and, uh, she was always there. She was just um, just huge for me for the last year. Mm -hmm. And Leah, welcome back. I'm so excited to plan um, a great year with the youth, with you. And um, yeah, there's a lot of excitement going on. These guys um, had a great time, and they're ready to do fun things. Great. Well, we're a little... We went a little longer than expected, yes. so I'm not. Um, we're now going to sing the kids out. I think they were going to make bracelets. They're going to play with lo Legos today. Play with Legos. Yeah. Where are they going? Do we know? Lower hall. Lower hall. So let's sing our kids out to the lower hall. And parents, if your kids, where you usually meet, yes. And parents, if you if you're new today, feel free to walk down with your kids so that they can find their way. Okay. As we this friendly place interconnected community that cares for one another. Part of how we embody this care is by making time each week to share the joys and sorrows we hold in our hearts. So I think since we're so long on time, why don't we, we won't do our ritual today just because we're, we'll be here till 1230 otherwise. So Angela, why don't you just roll right into the offertory and, uh, and then I'll just say a few closing words to uh, Reverend Susan and Reverend Leah. So how does that sound? <laughs> Thank okay. you. Yes, we won't do the joys and sorrows uh, rituals. I am representing the pastoral care team today, though, so I will be in that back corner for a short time after the service. If anybody would like to come by, you need someone to listen. Offertory. This community offers its love and support to what is closest to our hearts. Another way we show our care for one another is in sharing our financial gifts with our community and our congregation. Our social action collection for the month of August is for the City of Promise, whose mission is to make a positive impact on generational poverty and support a culture of achievement through child-centered dual-generation initiatives in Charlottesville. City of Promise does this by connecting low-income and BIPOC families to the resources they need, such as food, transportation, and housing, 
to build stable home environments and form the backbone of healthy communities. Rachel, I think you've got the social action slide up there already for those who would like to make a donation right now. In addition to giving online, if you'd like to give today with cash or check, please use the social action collection envelopes here in the sanctuary. Place your offering in the collection plate and please make sure your checks are made out to the UU Congregation of Charlottesville and write social action collection in the memo line. Now, along with our social action collection, we invite everyone to financially support the ministries and mission of this community. Through your pledges and the weekly Sunday morning offering, together our financial gifts support UUCville and enable us to put our love into action. This is our shared ministry. During the music that follows, you can offer your financial support by using the text address or going to our website. You may place cash or check in the collection plates as they are passed. Let us now dedicate all the many gifts we share with one another by saying, we accept your gifts with gratitude. May we use them wisely for the highest good. Well, folks, the good news is I didn't write much of a sermon today, so it'll be really, really short. <laughs> Leah's laughing with deep gratitude. So, <laughs> so it's so wonderful to have this time on a Sunday morning to welcome the wonderful Reverend Leah back and to thank the equally wonderful Reverend Susan for her ministry over the last six months. I'm so grateful to both of you for your service, for your friendship, and of course for your fabulous ministry. I told both of you that before coming to this congregation two years ago, my previous um, UU congregation I served, I was it in terms of ministers. I had a very talented and dedicated staff, but the minister meetings were kind of lonely. I was sitting by myself. and. Um, now, at the time, I didn't really think much about it. I didn't know what I was missing. Um, I didn't realize that, um, you know, I was busy. I didn't really think about, wow, wouldn't it be wonderful 
to have a colleague, a ministerial colleague, to work with every day. Well, I don't know if it's true for all ministers who work side by side with the colleagues, but I can tell you that the last two years working with Reverend Leah and the last six months working with Reverend Susan has been an absolute joy and most assuredly made me a better minister. As I said, I never really understood how truly enriching it is to have colleagues day in and day out that I can talk to, share feelings of joy and sometimes frustration or disappointment, create Sunday morning uh, services and church programs, and of course, and these two can definitely testify, to have a regular audience for my endless stream of corny dad jokes and meaningless puns. So um, Reverend Susan got in the habit of saying, well, you really, you really got it going today, don't you, Reverend Tim? So, <laughs> but I have learned so much um, from the two of you, and I've learned most importantly that leadership at its best is shared collaborative, creative, and so much fun. When we celebrated Reverend Leah's sabbatical last February, I remember recounting how important a six-month sabbatical had been for me when I took one some years ago. I returned from sabbatical, and here's a picture, I think, of that service that Sunday with Reverend Leah. I came back from the sabbatical I took a few some years ago, I was rested, energized, and feeling like I was making that new beginning. Felt like I had an opportunity to try new things and to let go of old habits and ideas. I also felt, as Reverend Susan said earlier, kind of uncertain. I mean, I'd been gone for a pretty long time, but that uncertainty was actually a really good thing because beginning again helped me to be more open, more curious, and better able to lead. And there's actually a wonderful concept. This will be the one little piece of spiritual content in my remarks this morning. There's a wonderful concept in Zen Buddhism, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, called Shoshin, which is best translated as beginner's mind. And as I understand it, to live with beginner's mind is to be open to the possibilities of the present, to accept that we're not in control and that we can't know the outcome of our journey, and to be as free as we can be from the tyranny of expectations, assumptions, goals, and resolutions. Beginner's mind opens us, opens our hearts and our lives so that we can learn, so that our heart can speak to us, so that our life can help us find meaning and possibility in the midst of uncertainty and mystery. Reverend Leah, as I told you at that service back in February, you are a great Unitarian Universalist minister. You lead from a place of kindness and creativity and compassion. I can't wait to hear about all of your sabbatical adventures. Now, I'm also assuming you feel as if you have a lot of catching up to do here at UUCville. My one small piece of advice as you rejoin us is to let your beginner's mind flourish and have free reign. Listen and learn with new eyes and ears and share that wisdom with all of us. Things are going pretty well here at the UU Congregation of Charlottesville and with your wonderful ministry back among us, we will most certainly fly even higher. Welcome back, my friend. Reverend Susan, I can say with certainty that you have ministered with beginner's mind throughout your time as our sabbatical minister of faith development. Of course, Reverend Leah, who is well known for her detailed lists, left you with lots of, lots of information, which is good, and that's wonderful. But as a member of our staff said at our little lunch for you earlier this week, you made wonderful use of Reverend Leah's wisdom, but also leaned on your own experience, your own skills and passion, your own beginner's mind. You made this ministry your own, and this congregation is so much better for your leadership. And I was going to take a little more time to talk through these pictures. I'll show them to you fast. I had lots of puns ready to go. But, um, but Reverend Susan, here's one of my favorite pictures of you. I think it shows your work ethic. Can I say that you really put your back into this ministry? 
Uh, sorry. Okay, you, you guys can boo and roll your eyes if you want to. I, I tell my staff, if you roll your eyes at my dad jokes, that means they've worked. So, um, uh, Susan, this was the youth bridging service, which I thought just went so well. And this is you speaking to the bridgers, and it was just a wonderful service. Of course, you've already put on the wig. So um, I had a couple of pictures of you in action with the wig on. So should be coming up. Hopefully. No? There it is. Woohoo! Wow. I mean, talk, I mean, you know what? They really capture the months um from the beginning from the, one of like from almost the beginning when we started meeting it felt close to you and i just knew that i could trust you not long after you began in late february early march we began talking at length about the war in the middle east and about the role what is the role of the congregation in the face of horrific violence and loss of life i'm still puzzling over that and um you were such a good thinking partner and 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 um, conversation partner. You offered me support and affirmation on that terrible Saturday when I responded to the call to be present at UVA when um, when the administration decided to use violence against their students who were engaged in peaceful protest. And then you also, continually encouraged and nudged me to think harder and do more in the face of what was going on in Gaza. But you know what, Reverend Susan? You did it with love and compassion, with kindness. And I will always see you as a mentor, a guide, and a friend. So thank you so very much. The two of you, I hope you guys know how lucky you are that these two folks are here. They are amazing Unitarian Universalist ministers. I know how, I'll, I'll, how lucky I am. And Susan, I'm so relieved that this is goodbye to your sabbatical ministry, but not to you. You are such an important leader in this congregation. Your pa I've told you your passion for social justice, which you didn't even mention before. I mean, the work you do with the Poor People's Campaign and Impact and so much more is really inspiring. And um, I am delighted that Reverend Susan and Reverend Leah are both part of the future of this church, which is so bright and so filled with possibilities. And I can't wait to see where that future takes us. Amen. That was a little bit of a sermon, but I tried to keep it short. So let's rise now and body or spirit and join in singing hymn 131, Love Will Guide Us. Peace has caught us from the border through the way and the road from grief to giving. Love will guide us through the hard night. Would you extinguish the chalice? And I leave you with these closing words from a colleague who's, oh, Michelle Collins. I thought I forgot to put her name in the script. Change abounds. It's all around us, within us, between us, in our communities, our neighborhoods, and our faith communities. May we each find the balance point we need as we move through our ever-changing world. The balance between old and new, between known and unknown, between the familiar and the bold and risky possibilities 
that are there waiting for us, waiting and waiting. Friends, be well. Take very good care of yourselves, of each other, and of the world. Amen. Thank you for hanging in there. This was a, service was a little long, but it was worth it, I think, definitely. And Reverend Susan and Reverend Leah, thank you so much. You are the best. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.